England. But the same spirit in Buffalo. This team is so resilient. Three Super Bowl losses, each one worse. But they come out opening day like nothing's bothered them. Patriots were game. Here we go. From Orchard Park, New York. The last time the Bills saw Bill Parcells, they didn't like it. Norwood's field goal missed. The Giants were champs of Super Bowl 25. Now, a couple of years later. It's a foul ball by Leonard Russell, recovered by Cornelius Bennett. And he could go all the way. But he fumbles. He just dropped it. Biscuit, what are you doing? He recovered the ball, though. Bill's in business, third and goal. The new Bill receiver, Billy Brooks, catches the touchdown from Jim Kelly. 10-0 Buffalo. Everybody talking about the way Drew Bledsoe looked in the preseason, Tommy. Drew Bledsoe shows his skills here. He gets back in the pocket, gets a lot of pressure, shrugs off Bruce Smith, and then look at the rocket that he throws mm. down the field. And then to starving Marv Cook. Takes a little off it, nice touch pass. Patriots are driving. Fourth and one, Bledsoe calls timeout. Gets an earful from Coach. And then he dumps it off to Ben Winter Coach. And look at him push Nate Odoms out of the way. And he goes into the end zone for a touchdown. Bledsoe's first touchdown pass. There'll be many more. 10-7 Bills. Back to the other quarterback. They're both born on Valentine's Day, 12 years apart. Kelly hits his Valentine. Andre Reed. Look at Andre. One, two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, eight. Patriots miss him, including Parcells, who tried to hit him on the two. He's into the end zone, 17-7 Bills. Now 17-14, first play, fourth quarter. Kelly to Reed. Touchdown. Andre had six catches, three TDs, 110 yards. There was the duo. By the way, how's Bruce Smith been doing? Well, Kelly, Thermal, and Bruce with new contracts. Say hello to Drew Bledsoe. Buffalo pouring it on in the fourth quarter, 31 to 14 Bills. Mike Saxon's punt is going to be fielded by Russell Copeland. And look at the great moves. The youngster from Memphis State. He turns, heads the other direction, gets a block from Matt Darby. And he could go all the way. Touchdown. The Bills win their sixth straight opening game. And they always come out roaring, averaging over 30 points a game in the opener the last five or six years. They beat a game New England Patriots team 38 to 14. So Buffalo comes on and wins that opener again. Kelly with the four touchdown passes. Broncos at the chance. I mean, it sits there in the stomach of the Buffalo Bills like a real bad meal. But what happened? Week two at Dallas, it came time to eat again. Would it be better? Would the season be right? Marv Levy has a few tricks up his sleeve in the Super Bowl rematch. His new receiving weapon is Carwell Gardner from Louisville. He's the big fullback in a 10-yard play action. Kelly hits him 7-0 Bills. Third and three. Kelly has the option to scramble with, with the bad knee to throw to Kevin Smith. Carwell Gardner then puts him down with the scissor hold. The sleeper hold, I think, Tommy. Aikman took his licks today. Yeah, and Troy Aikman took a lot of those licks because Emmett Smith is not there. Why was Troy passing so much? Well, without Emmett, Derek Lassick, he ran OK, but then he found out. Even his brother Nate Lassick was frustrated. Emmett Smith, yeah, I, I think people remember him. Even Thermal has number 22, Emmett number on his ankles. 10 to 3, Buffalo with the half. Cowboys in trouble on third down, third and one. Not, says Darrell Talley. Lassick is stacked up, third and six, Aikman to Urban. But Michael drops it, trying to run before he catches it. And Jerry Jones, well, he, I tell you, it's a rough rule. Still 10 to 3, Lynn Elliott. Ex-Dallas kicker Lynn Elliott misses wide to the right. His second miss of the day. And Jimmy Johnson getting, uh, feeling a little pressure. Not quite like last year. A Tisker, a Tasker. Steve Tasker, a pro bowler at the special teams position, shows why, makes the down on the two. Troy Aikman tries to go to work. Play action to Jay Novacek, the Pro Bowl tight end. First down. Aikman. To all everything receiver Michael Irvin. First down. Even Derek Gaynor gets into the act with an eight yard gainer on a drop play. Dallas marching toward the goal line. Aikman. To the fullback, Darrell Johnston. He bobbles, but holds on. Third and four. Kevin Williams, the youngster. In motion, takes the handoff, and it's a touchdown. And we're tied at 10, a 98-yard drive. The E's look like the defending champs. But on a punt, Tommy, he fumbled Monday night, and Williams does the same. Yeah, Kevin Williams here trying to pick up some extra yardage, finds himself in the thick of the defense, and finally coughs the ball up. The Buffalo Bills recover, and although he was trying to get extra yardage, that will put you in Jimmy Johnson's doghouse. And it's field goal by Steve Christie made it 13-10. A minute three to go, last gas, Bakeman, Alvin Harper. First catch of the game with a minute to go. Then. 
Gainer gets the Cowboys even closer inside the 10. Under 20 seconds to go with the magic there at 13-10. Aikman's pass for Novacek tip. Intercepted by Matt Darby, the dinosaur. His first career interception, none bigger in Buffalo Bill history. Jerry Jones has seen his team fall to 0-2. And the Bills extract revenge there, 2-0. Buffalo winning in Dallas, 13-10. We repeat, no team has ever begun a season 0-2 and made it to the Super Bowl. More on that. Cowboys and the Buffalo Bills. First of all, for Buffalo, last year, week two, they went out to San Francisco and, and in a great game, beat the 49ers. Admittedly, that's not who beat them in the Super Bowl the year before. That kind of cleared their heads, I think, for the regular season. This win today certainly clears their heads. Well, and I think if fans ever needed evidence of how much of the game is played up here, just watch the way this situation plays out in Dallas with Emma Smith sitting in Pensacola, Florida. Well, that's not where he uh, should be sitting, and everybody wants to see Emmett play. But if history means anything, that 0-2, he never make it to the Super Bowl, it could be too late, at least for this year. And who would thought we would say that? in the playoffs, including last year's AFC Championship game won big time by the Bills 29 to 10. This rivalry has been fueled a little bit by the all-pro linebacker, the Miami Dolphins, Brian Cox, who hates the city of, of Buffalo, hates the team, at least to hear him speak, and today he decided to take on the fans. I heard they're going to throw batteries in, but if they throw something at me, they better be prepared for me to come up on the stand. Well, hey, we're number one, says Cox and the Miami Dolphins. Remember, they went up there last year in impressive fashion. The weather was not very nice. Winds gusting to 25 mile an hour. It rained up until game time. But very early, Dan Marino says, who cares about the bad weather? Terry Kirby for 11 yards. Then a shotgun, the throw to Mark Ingram. Beautiful throw over Henry Jones, 26 yards. Then connecting with Irving Fryer for 10 yards. Then three plays later, a bad snap. Hey, get rid of it here. Keith Sims recovers it. And fortunate for Miami, they settled for a field goal. Fortunately, they didn't lose the ball. Dolphins keep on firing. The wobbler to Keith Byers. Then from the shotgun, the throw to Irving Fryer, knifing through the Buffalo defense for a touchdown. It's 9-0 Dolphins. They missed the kick. Still in the first quarter. More. Marino to Fryer. Seven yards. Then to the rookie running back from Virginia, Terry Kirby across the middle. Seems galore in the Buffalo defense. 36 yards. Then, Marino, bootleg. And my goodness, Marino's gonna run on a bootleg for a touchdown, four yards. 16 nothing Miami. What a quarter for Dante. Nine of 14 for 170 yards. He passed for one and ran for one. Nice job here by Keith Byers. He's looking for the pass, looking for the pass. But once he and Marino might make eye contact, he realizes he's gonna run, and he absolutely pancakes Mark Kelso right there. Meanwhile, while one member of the class of 83, Marina, was brilliant, Jim Kelly, another member of the class, had an awful first quarter. Brian Cox with the sack. Then, number 91, Jeff Cross gets into the act. Thurman Thomas, well, not a great day for Thermal. On the inside handoff, didn't do well. Draw play pursuit. Larry Webster on the stop. Tom Olivadotti's uh, defense doing a good job. And now with the win. In the second quarter, Kelly's pass picked off by Louis Oliver. Shades of last year when he picked off three, including one of over 100 yards, ran for a touchdown. Kelly, angry. Yep, and Brian Cox taking it out on him right there. Don Shula's team up now 19-0. Kelly looks to come back, but he's picked off by Louis Oliver. And he was dazed, confused. The Bills look out of sync. One highlight for Buffalo, the end of the first half. From 59 yards, it's lightning striking again for Steve Christie. Third longest field goal in NFL history. Marv Levy so excited. Shoeless guys against the win in the third quarter. Could Buffalo come back? Mark Higgs, 11 yards. Then Kirby plows ahead for a first down. And the play action. Look at the time and the zip to keep fires. Boy, Marino just zips the ball. There's nobody better than him. Then, Byers again makes the tack. Makes the catch. Shakes Mark Maddox. Bulls down to the 12. Another field goal for Stojanovic. Shula's Dolphins lead 22 to 6. Marino. Nine for the history books. To Irving Fryer, 24 yards. He's passed Johnny United, says Dan Marino, for third on the all-time passing list 
save that ball. Marv Levy's Bills, 10 minutes to go. Can they mount a comeback? A little shovel to Kenneth Davis, forget it. But then Davis playing when Thurman got nicked, darts to the middle for a first down. Then he's hammered by Dwight Hollier. The Bills look elsewhere. We're in the old number loft in Billy Brooks. And Kelly finally has time. Looks for Brooks. Good pass over the middle. Could the Bills magic come through again at home? 22 to 13. They're down with seven and a half to go. Marv Levy decides the onside kick. Now watch this. An interesting setup by Steve Christie, but the wind blows the ball. Well, not off the tee, but off the way he set it up. Basically, he went as a he kind of scolded out of the sand trap, <laughs> and uh, that didn't work, and not much did for the Buffalo Bills. So the Miami Dolphins uh, beat them impressively, we shall say, at a rich stadium by the count of 22 to 13 by far and away the best the Dolphins have looked this year. So now each team is two and one. We told you about the historic passing of Dan Marino. Marino threw for 282 today. Sports, and I know we got a game of some importance tonight in Orchard Park. The Bills and the Giants, no matter who you're rooting for, a heck of a matchup under the lights at Chili Ridge Stadium. The Bills up 3-0 when Phil Simms' pass is tipped. Henry Jones picks it off. He will head down the left sideline, and no one's going to touch him. 85 yards on the score, 10-0 Buffalo, and the fans at Ridge Stadium getting into this one big time. Let's keep going if we can. Thank you. The Giants come back. Sims avoids the rush. It finds Chris Calloway. That, that made it 10 to 7. Down 14, 10 in the fourth. Kelly to Pete Metzlars with two and a half minutes left. The Bills led 17, 14. The Giants last drive snuffed out by Bruce Smith who pulls down Sims and that put it away. Now the Bills beat the Giants 17 to 14. Next up for Buffalo, the Oilers a week from Monday. 1990 when they went on to defeat Buffalo in Super Bowl 25. The Bills coming off a home loss to Miami and had not lost two in a row in Orchard Park since 1986. Some fans, well, at least one, remembers that Super Bowl loss. Bills out in front early, up 3-0, third and one. Sims passes tipped, <clears throat> intended for Howard Cross. Henry Jones picks it up, and a few of his close friends dance 85 yards for pay dirt. It's nothing Bills. Looked like they were going to blow out the G-men, but the Bills offense couldn't get going. Jim Kelly, Keith Hamilton. Kelly, 3 of 9, 40 yards in the first half. Phil Sims, Mark Ingram, third and goal. It's 14-10, Giants. Sims is pumped. Fourth quarter, just under two and a half minutes. Kelly, Pete Metzelars, a brilliant drive. Helped out by Thurman Thomas, still hobbling on that sore ankle. And Jimbo crosses himself and says, we got one. 17-14, the final. The Bills are 12-2 and in their last 14 games against NFC teams. Not counting Super Bowls, of course. Soldier Field, the Falcons and the Bears, third quarter. Sensing that deja vu feeling all over again as they travel to Buffalo to try and avenge their wild card nightmare from last season's postseason. The baseball's post. A little later in the all-time greatest disaster. Last January, AFC wild card game in Buffalo. The Bills rally from a 32-point deficit to beat the Oilers 41-38. Six weeks into this season, Houston still hasn't recovered from the blindside hit. Same team, same place meeting on Monday Night Football. Last year's collapse in Buffalo hanging over the heads of Warren Moon and the Houston Oilers. Maybe first quarter. Moon's pass batted by Cornelius Bennett, tipped by Jeff Wright, picked off by Bennett. Now, there was no flag on the play, but should there have been? Bruce Smith hits Warren Moon well after he dumped it off. Next play, Kelly to Don Beebe for 34 yards and the score, 7-0 Bills. But the Oilers would come back this time. Moon to a wide open Leonard Harris corner of the end zone. We were tied at seven. Buffalo looking for the lead. Jim Kelly to Andre Reed. This is a catch, folks. 15 of 25, 247, three touchdowns for Kelly. The Bills a 14-7 lead. Kelly liked it so much. Hey, why not try the same connection again? Finds Reed again, splits the defense, takes it in for the touchdown. Buddy Ryan's defense, you know what they say about those who live in glass houses, right? Well, here's the Chuck and Duck offense for you. Moon to Hayward Jeffries. Kids, this is how not to carry the football. Of course he fumbles it on the hit by Darrell Talley. That led to a Thurman Thomas touchdown. Now, the Oilers just could not tackle the Bills. But watch, Jim Kelly hits Thurman Thomas. He could go all the way, but wait. 
He's hit by his own man, Carwell Gardner. Unofficially, that counts as a tackle. Second half, Oilers go to Commander Cody. Cody Carlson, his pass batted down and caught by lineman Eric Norgard. Hey, that's a 13-yard gain, folks. Hey, Jack, might want to put that in the offense. Bills crushed the Oilers 35-7. to Bills didn't have to fall behind by 32 before winning this time around. On one series in the game, the Oilers were called for pass interference, then had 12 men on the field on two consecutive plays, and then allowed Kenneth Davis to score from the three. Buffalo led 28-7 at the half. You know they were thinking about January. We came in at halftime, and we were up. And uh, that was thing that was going through everybody, my, everybody's mind, you know, last year, what happened when we came back. So that was in the back of our head. Um, going back out and just going ahead and nailing the uh, coffin shut all the way, you know, putting that last nail in. We got to, you know, we got to play the Jets. We got to play New England. We got to play Indianapolis. Uh, I think we have to win our own championship if it comes down to that. We can't worry about anybody else until we play them. So uh, we just have to take care of our own business. Oilers head coach Jack Pardee was asked about his job status. He replied, my number one worry is the players. He should have added to that sentence, the players holding on to the football. The Oilers tops in the league and only... Every time you talk to the Bills, in fact, almost every week, one of the Bills will talk about the importance of turnovers, avoiding them on offense and forcing them on defense. Last night against the Oilers, the turnovers were the key. And this one was the key to the game. Coming up first quarter, Cornelius Bennett will leap up to block the Warren Moon pass. He gets some help from Jeff Wright, who tips it right into the hands of Biscuit for the interception. And I just tried to read his eyes and, and follow the ball, you know, the release of the ball. And just so happened I got my paw up there and batted it. And, and Jeff Wright knocked it back up in the air, and I just picked it off of the guy's head, you know, and it was, hey, the rest is history, I guess. And it was the beginning of the end for the Oilers. Next play from scrimmage, Jim Kelly goes for it all. A touchdown to Don Beebe, gets the Bills off on the right foot, leading 7-0. Whoa, what a start. It has a, a big effect on us. It has two of us. We got to go right back out on the field, and the other one, we're up seven points. So it's kind of a win-win situation. And most of that was caused by the defense. Mickey Washington playing for J.D. Williams, a big role. Watch him break through right there for the sack on Warren Moon. Kelly looked a lot like his old self last night. Two touchdown passes to Andre Reed. This one making it 21 to 7 Buffalo. And then capping the first half, the Bills' first rushing touchdown, and who better than Thurman Thomas? 28 7 the score, but still an eerie feeling for the Bills. And it was almost a like identical score. Uh, it was 28 to 7, I think it was. And last year's 28 to 3. So we were talking like we weren't going to, you know, we weren't going to quit. We weren't going to let it happen to us because that would be too big of a story. The only big story this night was the Bills, offense and defense. This time it's Daryl Talley getting the interception, one of seven turnovers. The Bills form stand just for good measure. A final touchdown, this time by Kenneth Davis. See him scoop up the loose ball. Bills get the big victory, 35-7. to To have a win like this against a, a team that uh, that has been struggling, uh, you know, but they can explode at any time. For us to come out and play well like we did, uh, you take your hat off to the players on this football team. Bills now 4-1, and one, still tied for first in the AFC yeah. East with the Dolphins much more coming up at 6. For Bills fans, fun to watch. Yes, definitely. Right, Rich, thank okay. you. Jets got the early lead. Boomer Esiason on third and 10. Hits Terrence Mathis for the 12th of never for 12 yards. Third and three, Boomer to Chris Burkett for six, first down. Third and goal, Brad Baxter speaks out into the end zone. Touchdown, 7-0 the Jets. The Bills... Well, the Jets, you see, they converted all the uh, third downs. Now, what do you do if you're the Bills? You give the ball to Thermal Thomas. Gets a block from Carwell Gardner from Louisville. It's a touchdown. But the Jets, and more importantly, the refs, Paul Holding. It's a field goal instead, 7-3. Jim Kelly to Thermal for 32 yards down to the five-yard line. And then Kelly has his man, Tom. Yeah, he goes here to Don Beebe, and you won't see this very often. Beebe dropping the ball. It looked like he almost thought he was trying to keep his feet in, had to keep running. All he had to do was stop, make the catch. So instead of the touchdown, it's a field goal, 7-6. to six. Buffalo moved the ball all day. They just couldn't score. Kelly to Thermal. Look at the fancy footwork. He continues to be the best, a gain of 12. Buffalo threatened with Kelly. Ball tipped at the line by Fraze. Brian Washington picks it off in the end zone, returns it 30 yards, and again, the Bills are stymied. Somehow, Kelly and the Bills are trailing 7-6 in the third because they just don't score in the red zone. But Walt Corey's defense, big play players. For example, here's one of the number 56, Darrell Talley. He makes the pick, and he could go all the way 
61 yards, touchdown, 13 to 7. Ooh. Daryl Talley does a great job here of holding up the tight end, James Thornton, and he runs a better pattern than Thornton does. Gets uh, the hands off step, makes a great catch. Now watch Bruce Smith. Oh, line him up as a wide receiver. Marcus Patton with the hit, and look at the play by Bruce. It's the athleticism of Bruce Smith. Look at him reach out, lay out the soft hands on the big man to make the inter interception. And then it's Bruce Smith who knocks it out of Boomer's hands. Eventually, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Daryl Talley recovered. The Jets, well, they only led by seven. Bruce Smith and company shackled them after that first drive, and Buffalo ups their mark to six and five and one. They beat the New York Jets by the count of 19 to 10. The Bills outgained the Jets 413 to 237. Thermal had 184 yards in total offense. And Tommy, what we note here is that on defense and also by Thurman Thomas, see what the Bills have. Big time players still. It's not like the three straight Super Bowls. Okay, guys are getting old. The big play players continue to come through. Well, another outstanding day by Thurman Thomas is what keyed him offensively. Although the Buffalo Bills did not get in the end zone via their offense, you think about the big plays: Bruce Smith, Daryl Talley coming to the forefront. And I, I hate to say this because I know a lot of people don't want to hear it, but the way this team is playing right now, you're thinking it. Buffalo, someone, Atlanta, January. Yes, somebody yeah. is going to have to knock the That's Bills exactly off. exactly right. They continue to look the best in the AFC today. This is their first road game since early September, yes. saving on the laundry bills uh, than the per <laughs> diem. Uh, when we return. The NFL, Carl. Yeah, that is exactly what the Bills are trying to do Monday night, Steve. Find the holes, and you know there have been many of them in the Redskins team this season. Tampa Bay's win on Sunday meant the Skins were the only team in the NFC with just one win. That victory came in game one against the Cowboys. The last time Washington dropped six in a row 30 years ago. Bills, meanwhile, trying to erase the last of those Super Bowl nightmares, having already beaten Dallas and the Giants. The big hands of Bruce Smith warming up for later in the game. First quarter, it's Kelly heating up to Andre Reid, and this one goes 65 yards. This is the 50th Kelly to Reid touchdown. Most of any active passer-receiver combination in the game. Bills 7-zip. Daryl Green calling for some backup. Mark Rippin on. Third down. And Desmond Howard criticized by some for not getting involved. He does on this play. 32 yards. He made two catches on the evening. That set up Reggie Brooks. The handoff and seven yards up the middle. First fourth quarter touchdown this season for the Skins. Brooks 117 yards. Marv not too concerned because he's got Kelly hitting Reed over the middle. He had four catches for 117 in quarter one. Then it's Billy Brooks, 11 yards. Just like that, it's 14-7. Second half, still 14-7. Thurman takes over. Six yards to the left. And then on third and 10, it goes to Brooks over the middle. Third and 10, it's Thurman. 13 more yards, 129 total for Thomas. Carwell Gardner, six yards up the middle. Then it's Thomas, a six-minute, 12 play, 75-yard drive, 21-10. Richie Pettibone was not pleased with his defense. He would not be pleased with his return team either. The ensuing kickoff and the tackle made by Monty Brown. Looks like your basic tackle, but uh, not to Monty Brown. You think he knows it's Monday Night Football? What a boy, Monty, good tackle. Third down. Perfect pass from Rippin to Nate Odoms. Wrong team. Rippin's fourth interception. He was 15 of 42 Odoms with two interceptions. Bit of history. We saw his hands getting warm. And here's why Bruce Smith sack number 100 as Rippin goes down. And the team goes down as well. Final on this one was 24-10 in favor of Buffalo. Marv Levy has now beaten all 28 teams in regular season action. Art Monk did have a catch, 155 straight games. He's done that. Bills had the points in the yards, 397 in all. They improved to 6-1. and one. And after the game, Chris Berman talked with the Bills. They really didn't have a, a lot of respect for us because over the past couple of years, they have dominated us. And uh, this is a great victory for us. Does it mean a lot to you to come out and play well against the Skins, you as the lineman? Well, I, th I think our whole football team want to come out and play well. I think, uh, uh, you know, I, we tried to downplay that as much as we could, but I think in the back of everybody's mind, uh, I think it was there that, that, that we're playing the three teams that beat us in the last three Super Bowls, and uh, it, it felt awfully good for the five linemen that were up there to, to get some yards on the ground. So the ghosts have been exercised, but as Cornelius Bennett said, we would still like to have those three rings. Marv Levy said our division is our concern right now. The Bills are tied for the top spot with Scott Mitchell and the Dolphins. Steve? With a 
to have that Super Bowl look in the AFC. They're six and one going in against the New England Patriots at one only once. But one thing for sure over the years, the Bills always struggle at New England. As a matter of fact, they lost eight of their last 11 at Foxborough going into today. Could New England pull the major upset? Well, Bill Parcells and company, they played the Bills tough for three quarters opening week before the final score got large. And uh, the Patriots tried to take a lead, but Scott Sisson, the youngster who's been on again, off again, was off again. The field goal, 28 yards. Parcells, well, I think he might have a word with the young kicker. You think so? Yeah. Woes continue for the Pats because Bruce Smith playing as well as he ever has. Going up against Scott, won't you let me take you on a CQs? And he takes him on one right now. More bad time for CQs. Chase into the pocket of Tommy. Wait, wait, Cornelius Bennett's got CQs. Who's fast? I'll take Bennett. Biscuit. Nails him, and uh, Ezekiel's had to leave the game with a separated shoulder. So for the first time in a month, Drew Bledsoe, he has to come in in relief of Ezekiel's, who came in in relief of Bledsoe when he got hurt. And the Foxborough fans, that's who they want to see anyway. And the Bills, did they want to see him? Well, judged by Mark Maddox. Boom! Oh, Tommy, watch it. Yeah, you watch here on the replay. You talk about the toughness of Bledsoe. He had to be tough to get up from this one. Ouch. He did not miss a play. Bledsoe came back in the third quarter on the bootleg 15 yards before Darby knocks him out at the five-yard line. This is a favorite of quarterbacks. Once they get into plus territory, this was probably called by Bledsoe as a sweep. He just kept the ball on his own. And that will set up a play for the workhorse. Derek Russell, good-looking running back, who had 95 yards today. Tough yards and 25 carries. A touchdown, 7-0 P-Man. Patriots lead 10-0, 10 minutes to go in the game. Marv Levy's team rolling up the yards, but no points. Then Jim Kelly to Thurman Thomas over the middle for 16 yards. That sets up Kelly to Pete Metzelars. Touchdown to the tight end. Eight minutes to go. The Patriots lead it, but now just 10-7. Bills get the ball deep on their own 13-104 to go. A couple of plays, and they're up uh, to the 30. And then here it is. Russell Copeland, the rookie wide receiver. It's a 55-yard game with just 30 seconds to go. That sets up. Steve Christie from 26 yards. It's good, and we're going to overtime. The Patriots win the toss, but go anywhere. The Bills go somewhere, then they fumble. Patriots have it again. They don't go anywhere. Now it's the Bills' second possession. Andre Reid beats Renee Thompson for 46 yards. Every time opponents have gotten inside the 20, the Patriots give up points. Would this be the time they'd stop them? Well, Steve Christie for the winner. And lightning striking again for Christie. It's good. The Bills shut out for 50 minutes. Go on to beat the Patriots 13 to 10. The Patriots were so game. It's the fifth game they've lost this year by three or less, the second in overtime. But for Buffalo, they up their mark to seven and one and dodge a bullet between Monday night games from Washington and next Monday night at Pittsburgh. And for the Patriots, like we said, they were game, Tommy, but not quite. I mean, it, they now know that they, when they're up, they can play with some of the good teams in the right situation. For Buffalo, though, it seemed like they pressed the button, didn't they, when it was late? <laughs> well, I think it, on occasion, the Buffalo Bills show us how good they are as a football team. Today, as Chris said, for 50 minutes, they kind of drug along with the New England Patriots, and then they upped the tempo the last 10 minutes of the game. The key play, uh, Jim Kelly looking off the defense and then going for the big 55-yard game to get them into overtime. I mean, the Bills have now played uh, half of their season. They've given up less than 100 points, just, just 97 points. Their defense better than it has been at this stage for any of these teams under yes. Marv Levy from 88 on. They're doing much better in the points against department when we return. Bills in 1993. The best run of the year came on a punt return. On opening day, Russell Copeland took this kick and took it the distance. Bounces off a group of tacklers and goes to the other sideline. And goodbye, Copeland will go all the way. The best hit so far also against the Patriots, this time in New England, where Mark Maddox pounded Drew Bledsoe. For this year's best defensive play, we go to Big D for the Big D. Matt Darby's interception saved the win over the Cowboys. Intercepted by Matt Darby. And the best play of the year was made by Andre Reid. His run after catch against New England was amazing. 
Reed still on his feet, still going. Reed! Touchdown! The pass. Let's hold the pass. Those are the key.